Hi, I'm Lama Gucci from Ashijima's Farm and you're watching Disney Channel. Kenma's Pog. Kazum Kenma hated social gatherings or anything that had the word social in it for that matter. He would rather roll down a cliff than spend his time hanging around people especially if they were horny and drunk. Not to mention holding or starting conversations for him felt like reliving an endless loop of social anxiety to say the least. While he spent every night playing video games Friday nights were special it meant he could stay up however late he wanted and no one could question him. Not only that but it also meant that his roommate would have gone home for the weekend and he could play video games peacefully. So it was with great anguish that he was being dragged to a party whose host he didn't even know all that well. In fact he almost didn't know anybody there not that he cared though. Shoyo can we leave now? He groaned peering his eyes at the restless human sized tangerine he called his best friend. Kenma he'll be here any moment. Hinata exclaimed relentlessly going to and fro between looking at his phone and at the door. I just don't understand why you still need me here. We took our photo my job is done. Because it'll be even better when he sees us together getting our groove on. I'm sorry but did you just say getting our groove on? Yep I sure did. You're such a dork shoyo. Hey. That's mean. Hinata pouted which earned an eye roll from the latter. No what's mean is trying to make your boyfriend jealous when you can just talk to him about your problems. Kenma placed his hands on his hips and narrowed his eyes at Hinata who was way too caught up in his anxiousness to care about the other's advice. Kenma we always do that and it's just so anticlimactic. I'm trying to get laid here not have a couple's therapy session with him. Why am I even friends with you? Because you love me. Unfortunately. You're being extra salty tonight. Have you been hanging out with Tsukishima? Definitely not. And I'm sorry it's just I don't do well at parties or stuff like that you know. Kenma looked around the room at the sweaty dancing bodies and felt a shiver run down his spine as the panic in his chest risen. Yeah I know. Hinata placed a hand on his shoulder and smiled softly at him. But you need to live a little too. I am living. I don't mean as characters in your games. Hinata looked at him in a deadpan expression and Kenma looked away from him shoving his hands in his pockets tracing his console with his thumb gently. But it's better that way. Aha uh -huh, sure. This time Hinata rolled his eyes and narrowed his vision towards the entrance. Kenma shook his head and pulled his hands out from his pockets. Shoyo would never get it, Kenma. What? He's here. Oh. Kenma turned his head in Kojima's direction. As expected once his eyes met those raging fiery blue ones he instantly regretted breathing. Yep he's here and he's angrier than ever. Kojima had that same look on his face when Kenma had accidentally drunk his milk that one time. Quick put your arm around me and pretend like I said something funny. Hinata ushered the other as he hurriedly grabbed the other's wrist. No thank you I'd rather not die at the hands of Kojima tonight. Kenma pulled his hand away from Hinata's grasp as he shook his head vigorously. He honestly liked Kojima as a person and thought that he was a good match for Hinata and under normal circumstances he and Kenma did get along fine. But if there was one thing he knew he shouldn't do at any cost it was messing with Kojima. Fine then I'll put my arm around you. Shoyoen. Before Kenma could finish his sentence Hinata had wrapped one of his arms around his waist and pulled him close. From a distance he could see Kojima marching towards them. Kenma had almost wanted to laugh at the fact that the resemblance between Kojima and a Red Bull was uncanny but his fear of being murdered took over him. What the fuck? The raven-haired boy in front of them snarled his eyes fuming with rage. Kenma had tried to get Hinata's arm off of him but his grip only tightened. Well hello to you too. Hinata smirked like he'd been waiting to say that for the longest time. What the fuck are you doing with him? I'm sorry I can't hang out with my friend? Do you kiss all your friends on their cheeks and wrap your arms around them? Kojima glowered his eyes at the smug little boy in front of him referring to the picture Hinata had deliberately posted on Instagram in an attempt to get the other all riled up. Sometimes. Sometimes? Kojima narrowed his eyes stepping closer. You're like when my boyfriend pisses me off. Kojima's eyes trailed down to where Hinata's arms were and snapped his head at Kenma who just gulped in response. I'm sure I think you should stop. Kenma murmured feeling like he might be getting a taste of death if this continued any longer. Get your hands off of him. And if I don't? 
Kojima clenched his jaw as he stared at Hinata's big brown eyes with a glazed look. If Kenma wasn't mistaken the look definitely screamed I will rip it off of him if you don't. And he had no doubt in his mind that Kojima would. Fine. Hinata huffed as he removed his arm from Kenma's waist and dropped it to his side. Kenma heaved a sigh of relief stepping a bit away from the both of them. Come with me. Kojima walked closer to Hinata and grabbed his wrist gently. Although he came across as an aggressive guy most times Kenma knew that even in his worst moments Kojima would never hurt his best friend. No. Why not? I can't just leave Kenma alone here. Hinata frowned and Kenma resisted an eye roll. Yeah okay. You're just playing hard to get. He'll be fine. Won't you Kenma? Kojima averted his gaze to the nerve-wracked boy in front of him with a small smile on his face. But Kenma knew well enough to not get fooled by that smile. Yeah I'll be fine. See he said he's fine. Now come. But. Hinata was cut off when Kojima whispered something in his ear prompting Hinata's eyes to bug out in shock. He cleared his throat as he turned his head to Kenma whose lips were curled in annoyance. I'm sorry Kenma but looks like someone doesn't want us to be together. He whined as the taller one dragged him out of sight. Oh whatever will I do with this pain? Now where do I go from here? They had been standing at the corner of the dance floor the only place Kenma wanted to desperately stray away from. With a horde of people accumulating the kitchen the hall and the rooms upstairs his next best bet was to find a couch he could settle in. And ultimately succumb to a world of peace and quiet located in his console. As he pushed his way through the sweaty dancing bodies he was reminded of everything that he hated about this place. He hated the ignorant people the tumultuous trap music that blasted through every crevice of the room the lack of personal space and the tiring journey it was to find a place to sit at. But most of all he hated that everyone around him was letting loose while he was seized by panic and nervousness. He absolutely hated it here. It had been 30 minutes since Kenma had begun playing Animal Crossing on his portable console. 30 blissful minutes. He was roped into a world of chaos and unpredictability that he absolutely loved. It took his mind off of things and he finally felt like he was making up for the time he had wasted on entertaining Hinata's childish play. With all the thrill and rush from playing the game he hadn't noticed the large tall body towering above him. He didn't notice until he felt an extra weight on the couch. Almost instantly his once feverishly moving fingers had stopped and his breath quickened as he looked at the man sitting beside him from the corner of his eye. He shifted in his seat nervously knitting his eyebrows together. Damn it and here I thought I could be alone and peaceful. So this is how you spend your time at parties. Kenma snapped his head at the voice and swallowed thickly. When his gaze met the others he noticed that the grin on the guy's face was widening with every fleeting moment. Is there something wrong with that? Nothing in particular. Just didn't expect to find someone playing video games all by themselves here. The guy shrugged and leaned his back against the couch placing his volleyball on his lap. Well it's better than sitting next to them right? Certainly. To say that Kenma was confused would be an understatement. He didn't know why this stranger had chosen to sit next to him and he certainly did not understand why they were talking to him. Did you need something? As a matter of fact I did. What was it? Well I'd definitely kill for a grilled mackerel pie right about now. The corner of the guy's mouth curved into a smile a sheer dimple appearing below his hazel eyes. Kenma rested his console on his lap as stared at the other not knowing what to say. As a response to his reaction the guy let out a laugh and scooted a bit closer to Kenma who unbeknownst to either of them had started to feel less uncomfortable with the present company. Hey did you happen to play volleyball in high school? The guy questioned tilting his head a little to the side. Not really. Oh. Why? Well I figured that you must have played volleyball at some point in your life if you're here so now I'm a little confused. Kenma straightened his back and nodded his head understanding the other's confusion. He must have thought I was a friend of Ikoa's. Oh yeah I came with a friend. You might know him his name's Shoyo. Hinata? Kenma nodded once again and the other's eyes perked up in what could only be described as surprise. No kidding. What? It's just. He kissed his teeth before parting his mouth open slightly. You're probably going to think I'm weird or creepy but. I won't tell me. Kenma interjected quickly the beat of his heart rapidly rising. 
I've seen you around on campus and you're kinda always alone so it came as a surprise that you're even here in the first place much less no Hinata. Upon hearing that Kenma frowned not knowing how to feel. Though he figured that the stranger probably didn't mean it in a bad way Kenma ducked his head down more so uncomfortable with the idea that someone had noticed him. It might sound weird but I prefer being alone. And I only know Shoyo because we went to the same high school. There was a moment of silence between them and Kenma slowly looked up at the guy with awaiting eyes only to see him staring back at him with an indecipherable expression on his face. Kenma shifted his gaze back to the ground gripping tightly onto the console he felt solace in. Even though he felt the pang in his chest magnify he was prepared for the stranger to get up and leave. He was used to that reaction. It's not weird. I like being alone too sometimes. Kenma looked up at him his eyes widened slightly. Well I was definitely not expecting that. No offense but you don't look like you like being alone. The sound of the guy's deep laugh reverberated around the room and Kenma felt a small smile creeping its way onto his face. He didn't exactly know why but there was just something about the guy that calmed him. Trust me I do. Of course not as much as you do but I get where you're coming from. You do? Yes yeah, sometimes it can get too much so I don't mind being alone. But if there's good company. He paused as his gaze averted to Kenma a gentle smile dangling on his face. I like that even better. Kenma felt his cheeks flush as he smiled back at the stranger whose presence might have just made his miserable night two times better. Kajima's pod. So what was so important that you had to practically drag me away from Kenma? Hinata asked the smirk on his face remained unwavered. Kajima locked the door and turned to him with narrowed eyes. He could not believe that the boat would actually pull this little stunt of his. But more importantly he could not believe that it would have such an effect on him. On the outside Hinata seemed like a sweet innocent boy but Kajima knew what kind of sinister thoughts ran through that pretty little head of his and how devious he could really be. And Kajima would be lying if he said that it didn't turn him on. You know you have some nerve throwing yourself at him and acting like nothing's wrong. Kajima said as he stepped dangerously close to the smaller boy who just backed away slowly in response. I wasn't throwing myself at him. Yes you were. No I wasn't. Hinata gulped as he felt himself backed up against the wall and Kajima stood in front of him with a raised eyebrow. So this is about me practicing with Atsumu and not you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Hinata crossed his arms and shifted his eyes awkwardly. Lying doesn't look good on you princess. Oh but you do. Like I said I don't know anything about you practicing with Atsumu or his pathetic blatant crush on you. Hinata spat out squinting his eyes at the taller boy who was now smirking down at him. Sounds awful like someone's jealous. Of what? Hinata scoffed as he looked away. Kajima grabbed the other's tiny wrists and pinned his arms over his head with one hand earning a gasp from the dazed boy in front of him. Not so confident now are we? You know what's funny? Kajima spoke in a low tone as he brought his face dangerously close to Hinata's flustered one. What? Hinata muttered faintly resembling barely a whisper. You act all unbothered and shit right now but your eyes say something different. The smirk on Kajima's face widened as he ran a thumb across the other's bottom lip feeling the smaller one's body tremble slightly. I gotta admit it's pretty exciting to see you tremble with just one touch. Ka. Kajima. Kajima inched his face closer his breath fanning across the nape of Hinata's neck making Hinata let out a whimper. God he loved that sound. Makes me wonder what kinds of reactions I'd get when I do. More. Kajima spoke slowly as he brushed his lips against Hinata's all while running his free hand down the other's body resting it at his hips. Hinata shuddered at the dominance laced in his tone. I know you want it but I won't give it to you that easily. Not without a fight. But it's a shame that you want to go back to Kenma. Hinata hated how cold he felt when the taller one let go of his hands and pulled away the smirk on his face clear as day. Hinata knew the other was enjoying this but he didn't care. He wanted him right here and right now. Well Kenma's waiting so. Kajima was about to turn around when a hand grabbed his arm. Got you. W wait. What is it Shoyo? Kajima knew how much his boyfriend loved it when he called him by his given name. As expected Hinata's eyes widened blushing furiously. I. Tell me Shoyo. 
What do you want? I want you. Hinata's hazel eyes stared at Kajima's piercing blue ones. Tobio, I want all of you. Now. Hinata mewled out as he felt a pair of lips smash against his feverishly and he clung tightly onto the back of his boyfriend's neck pulling him closer. As much as Kajima loved seeing Hinata's reaction to his name being called out there was nothing compared to the sensation that Kajima felt when his boyfriend called him by his name. It was pure heaven. I'm sorry to ask you this but it's been bugging me too much. What is it? Is your hair naturally that outrageous? Ouch. The guy feigned hurt as he put a hand over his chest. Sorry I should have worded it differently. Damn it I shouldn't have said that. What was I thinking? Now nah, you're good. But to answer your question this is just my bedhead hair and for some reason I can't seem to get rid of it. The guy wistfully sighed and Kenma just nodded. Oh makes sense. But now that I've seen your hair like this I don't think I can ever picture you with your hair down. Kenma confessed a tint of smile residing on his face and the other lets out a laugh running a hand through his dark glossy hair. What about you? That's definitely not your natural color. My hair used to be black but Shoyo told me that I stood out more with it so I decided to bleach my hair. Don't take this the wrong way but you're definitely not standing out any less with that hair color. Kenma scrunched his eyebrows feeling a bit distressed. So much for not standing out. What? I mean at least for me you stand out. The guy shrugged as he tossed the volleyball in his hand up and down. Panic and fear shone through Kenma's eyes as he began contemplating between a million colors to bleach his hair with. Crap do you think I should switch colors or something? Upon hearing that the guy stopped tossing and dropping his hands down. He shifted his attention to the perplexed blonde haired boy next to him. If I'm being honest even if you had the most blandest hair color I think you'd stand out. Why do you think that? Don't know just something about you I guess. Kenma was at a loss of words as the dazed look in his eyes remained constant. He knew he was bad at communication at holding conversations but in that moment he desperately wanted to say something despite his lack of skills. As Kenma's consciousness continued torturing him a body appeared in front of them. He looked up to see Oiko Toru, the host of the infamous party he was stuck at. He didn't know anything about him apart from the fact that he was a stellar player. Some said Oikoa was self-absorbed while others said he knew how to charm a crowd. And Kenma couldn't wait to find out which one he was. Hiru. The brunette whined placing his hands on his hips. Kenma's eyes widened as realization hit him like a ton of bricks. He didn't know the other's name. How could he have been talking to someone for this long without even asking for their name? Oikoa. Ugh I'm sad. A frown found itself onto the brunette's face his glossy eyes glistening under the dimly lit room. Iwezumi? Kiru whose name Kenma had just learned ticked an eyebrow. Yeah I miss him. Ikora looked down at his phone and heaved a sigh. Why don't you try calling him? He said he'd call in 10 minutes. Then what? I can't wait. I just wish he could come back from Tokyo right now. Ikora ran a hand through his hair tugging at the ends. Impatient brat. Kiru rolled his eyes as the other pulled his lower eyelid and stuck out his tongue muttering a backer. Oh who's this? Oikoa turned his head to Kenma who had been awkwardly fiddling with his fingers shifting his eyes between the new presence in the room and the console in his hands. This is. Kiru paused looking at Kenma with widened eyes. Kenma looked up at the peering dark eyes with a small smile. Kenma. My name's Kenma. Oh cool. I'm Oikoa nice to meet you. Oikoa had extended out a hand and Kenma hesitantly shook it. You too. Is he a friend of yours Kiru? Well we just met. He came with Hinata. Archibi-chan. Oikoa nodded in acknowledgement. Speaking of him where is he? Probably dry humping his boyfriend into Mars. Kenma rolled his eyes not realizing that he had accidentally outed his best friend. Your friend's funny. Oikoa laughed and Kiru cracked out a grin chuckling a little. He sure is. Wait I feel like I've seen you before. The smile on Oikoa's face faltered as he knitted his eyebrows together. I think my team played a practice match with yours in high school. Oh right. That's where I know you from. Do you still play? No. Kenma shook his head. From what he remembered Oikoa had already been a stellar player back then. He wondered how better he must have gotten now. In fact, he was afraid to know. Bummer. 
As Ikora opened his mouth to say something his phone buzzed in his hand. His eyes perked up in excitement and a huge smile was plastered on his face. Must be Iwazumi. Well I'll catch you guys later. Iwachan awaits me. Ikora giggled and the other two nodded their heads. They watched the brunette leave the room with his phone pressed up against his ear. So that was Ikora Toru. Ikora seems nice. Kenma turned to the raven-haired boy next to him who stared at him with bewildered eyes. He furrowed his eyebrows at the sight. Did I do something wrong? What? You said you didn't play in high school. Kenma raised an eyebrow confused about his remark. It took him a solid 10 seconds to realize that Kiru was referring to what Kenma had told Ikora. Yeah I didn't I was only on the team for like 3 weeks until I quit. Oh. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking why'd you quit? Nothing too serious it's just the third years pressured me a lot and made me work harder than others. I just felt left out a lot and I hated that. Besides I'd be damned if I was on a team with Shoyo again. Kenma shuddered at the memory of being picked on and yelled at by his so-called senpais. Well that sucks ass. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Kiru frowned at him finding the right words to say. It's okay I'm over it. For what it's worth I bet you would be amazing if you were in a team you felt comfortable in. You don't know that though. Kenma dropped his head letting his bangs cover a portion of his face. Maybe but I can tell. You have too much confidence in someone you just met. Yeah I guess. There was a brief moment of silence before Kiru spoke up. So Kenma ha? Huh? Kenma lifted his head and was unexpectedly greeted with a softer and much kinder smile. He was once again at a loss of words but felt the familiar calming feeling wash over him as the smile lingered on the other's face. Ha? Huh? Kenma is that your name? Yeah. Kenma stammered fighting the blush threatening to form on his face. Yours is Kiru right? Yeah. Kenma nodded not knowing what to say. You've got a nice name. You too. Kenma smiled nervously which earned a chuckle from Kiru. He had no idea who the guy next to him was but somehow every fleeting moment with him felt like drifting through a timeless existence. Kenma you're still here. Kenma snapped his head at the sound of his best friend's shriek. Hinata stood before him with his fiery bright hair all messed up and sweat dripping down his face. Even his shirt was buttoned wrongly as he'd missed one of the buttons. He reeked of sex. How else am I supposed to get home? Right I'm so sorry. Were you too bored? It's fine Shoyo. And no I had some company. Kenma looked at Kiru his lips pressed in a thin line. Oh. Hinata raised an eyebrow as he turned to the person being referred to. His eyes widened as he realized who it was. Kiru-san. Chibi-chan. Kiru bit back a chuckle as the grin on his face lingered. Thank you so much for keeping him company. You make me sound like a child. You are. Hinata teased and Kenma rolled his eyes. Now it was the opposite. He was keeping me company. Hinata was taken aback for a moment and smiled widely at the thought that his best friend had made a new friend. I'm glad to hear that. Well Kajima and I are heading back. You want us to drop you off right? Kenma nodded and stood up from the couch. He turned to Kiru with an unsure look on his face. He didn't know what to say since he hadn't prepared for a goodbye yet. You'll be alright yeah. Yeah. Though I gotta admit I'm gonna be hella bored now. Kiru pouted at him with broody eyes. Oh do you want my game? Nah that's okay I'll be fine. Kiru smiled for the millionth time that night and Kenma nodded hesitantly. I'll see you later Kiru. I'll see you Kenma. It was nice talking to you. Kenma returned the smile as he relaxed his shoulder. It really was nice talking to him and deep in his heart he had hoped that he could see him again. You too. Just as Kenma was about to turn around Kiru's words stopped him in his tracks. Oh by the way in case I wasn't obvious enough before you should totally try out for our volleyball team. Trust me we'll treat you much better. Kenma's heart leaped at the gesture and he was almost tempted to agree hoping to use that as an excuse to meet the kind-hearted man he simply didn't want to say goodbye to. But in the back of his mind he knew well enough that he couldn't go through that again. Not when there were so many uncertainties in the air. Thank you for the offer but I think I'm going to pass. Very well. Kiru paused. If you change your mind you know where to find me. Kenma nodded as he followed his best friend feeling the beat of his heart rapidly rising. He hadn't expected his night to turn out like this. 
Panic clouded his mind as he wondered if the other would be alright if he'd meet him again if he should have said something else before leaving. But most of all he wondered if the other would reminisce about this night the way he would. As he was about to exit the room he turned his head around one last time his eyes searching for the hazel-eyed boy with the weirdest haircut he'd ever seen. And just as he had hoped Kiru remained on the couch his eyes following Kenma and his smile never leaving his face. With a sigh of relief Kenma walked out of his room with his best friend at his side and a smile implanted on his face. I hope you don't forget about me Kiru. Oh.